below the thunders of the upper deep, far, far beneath in the abysmal sea, his ancient dreamless uninvaded sleep, the kraken sleepeth, faint as sunlight's flea, about his shadowy sides above him swell, huge sponges of millennial growth and height, and far away into the sickly light, from many a wondrous and secret cell, unnumbered and enormous polypi, where now the giant arms the lumbering green, there hath he lay for ages, and will lie, battening upon huge sea worms in his sleep, until the latter fire shall heat the deep, then once by man and angels to be seen, and roaring he shall rise and on the surface die. There is a great duality to the sea. Gentle waves rock back and forth, tranquil and lulling. But the sea is also unpredictable, merciless, and terribly dangerous. From the earliest fishermen to our modern day sailors, one thing we know is certain. Deep beyond the ocean's inconceivable murky depths lies the great unknown. And for centuries, this mystery has spawned many tales of horrifying beasts that lurk the oceans deep. But of all the beasts that lie deep below, no legendary sea monster is as terrifying as the Kraken, nor as mystifying as we'll come to know that the Kraken is not merely a tale. However, much of this mystery has been clouded by misconception of the Kraken's origin being from Greek mythology. Homer's Odyssey certainly gave rise for some of the creatures feared at sea, with characters like Scylla, a dragon-like beast with the torso of a woman and in some records is described as having numerous heads of dogs coming out of her body. And then there's also Charybdis, who is essentially a whirlpool monster. And by whirlpool monster, I don't mean something cool like a beast that causes whirlpools. No, he's literally just a whirlpool. Not exactly terrifying, but daunting nonetheless, if you're a sailor, I suppose. The most fearsome of Greek mythology sea creatures is Cetus. Cetus is a monstrous great fish, whale, shark, or sea monster thing. Its recorded description is not exactly clear, but still seems pretty spooky. Cetus certainly shares a fearsome size and reputation as the Kraken, but it's not likely the source of the Kraken, given Cetus being some type of fish weird combination of sea life thing. That and the fact that it was slain by Greek mythology hero Perseus as he was saving his future wife, Ethiopian princess Andromeda, who was chained to a rock as a sacrifice to the monster. Now how did she end up there? Well, long story short, Andromeda's mom, Queen Cassiopeia, was talking smack about the sea nymphs known as the Nereids. Cassiopeia was boasting about how she's so much cuter than them and how fugly they were in comparison. And that royally pissed off Poseidon, who was always accompanied by his harem of Nereids. She was talking smack about the wrong side chicks. And might I add, the Nereids consisted of the 50 daughters of Nereus and Doris. There really wasn't much to do back then. Anyway, Poseidon sent floods to ravage the Ethiopian coast and sent the sea monster Cetus to destroy the kingdom and its inhabitants. A bit of an overreaction if you ask me. Queen Cassiopeia's statements must have hit a little too close to home, must have been some truth to what she said to have such a volatile reaction. Not that there were many rational Greek mythological figures to begin with. But as I was saying, Andromeda's dad goes to an oracle for help and is told he has to sacrifice his daughter to the monster in order to stop the destruction. And he was like, sounds cool, and he agreed to it. Mofo didn't even think twice. They chained their kid to a rock and called it a day. But as we know, fortunately, Perseus came just in time and got her the hell out of there. So knowing Greek mythology and the myths spread by Hollywood films, it's clear Cetus is not known to be the source of the Kraken. And that's because the Kraken is of Norse origin. Uh, 
a great beast of Scandinavian folklore believed to dwell in the deep ocean waters off the coast of Scandinavia and throughout the North Atlantic, terrorizing sailors and removing all those that wandered too far off navigating the great waters. According to Norse legends, the kraken is so enormous it can be mistaken for an island. Imagine the horrors of the fishermen lost at sea, searching for civilization, a place of rest, safety, solace. Then, in the distance, they see land. Finally, at last, they find relief, only to find that a gruesome death is what awaits them. Just the sheer size of the kraken is fearsome, let alone its ability to snap great ships in half, and its insatiable taste for human flesh, satisfying this hunger by devouring an entire crew in an instant. The history of the Kraken goes back to an ancient manuscript written in 1180 by Svere Sigurdsson, the soon-to-be King of Norway in 1184. Sigurdsson documented the beasts had taken hold of the waters off the coast of Norway, Greenland, and Iceland, documenting that the beast was just one of many sea monsters. By 1250, the Kraken had been documented again in Norway, in the King's Mirror, an educational text with chapters dedicated to the marvels of different countries. Several of the marvels included mythological creatures such as mermaids, mermen, and woodwoos, or wild men, a male covered in hair and animal-like. Among them, of course, was the great kraken, named at the time as Hafgufa, a large sea creature that could sink a ship and be mistaken for an island. The detailed account from Danish historian Erik Pontapidon Erik gave the Kraken its name, and within his 1755 documents on the natural history of Norway, he noted the sea monster as being round, flat, and full of arms or branches and is the largest, most surprising of all animal creation. He references numerous fishermen who unanimously confirmed this description without the least variation in their accounts. The fishermen stated when sailing out into the deep water of the Norwegian sea during summer, when the fish became abundant and quite easy to catch, the danger of the kraken lurks nearby, and the fish are being scared to swim closer to the water's surface. One tale of this creature's sightings date back to 1848 in the South Atlantic on the Royal Navy's HMS Daedalus ship. A crew of men encountered a large beast. In a report by the captain of the ship, Captain Peter McQuay, he described this formidable sighting. Its color, a dark brown with yellow white about the throat. It had no fins, but something like the mane of a horse, or rather, a bunch of seaweed washed about its back. It passed rapidly, but so close under our lee quarter, that had it been a man of my acquaintance, I should have easily recognized his features with the naked eye. The captain and his crew's account prompted a media flurry, and in the following several years, many sailors reported the same sightings. The Kraken feasted upon humans by not only snapping a ship in half, devouring the crew, it would also create a whirlpool, ultimately drowning its meal. But not all men fell victim to the Kraken upon reaching its location. Only the most skilled could set sail, collect fish, and quickly get the hell out of there. Like the beast itself, legend of the Kraken traveled across the oceans, frightening sailors and ensuring only the brave would be willing to set sail. It became the scourge of the seas. But was this beast really more than just a myth? It would appear so. And it happened in 1853, when the legendary kraken would enter the records of science and no longer be attributed to mere myth. Found on a Danish beach lied a giant cephalopod. Norwegian naturalist Jepetus Stenstrup recovered part of it to scientifically describe what we know as the giant squid. Evidence of giant squids having fought whales with parts of the giant squid found inside of them and attacks on sharks would further solidify the monster as more than mere myth. So there is truth to the kraken. Shh, no one tell Japan. That would certainly make for a lot of hotadegai, also known as squid sushi. 
<laughs> Just kidding. Japan already knows. In fact, Japanese scientists actually captured photos of the giant squid back in 2004. But evidence of this giant squid we know today wasn't exactly the sea beast imagined in the tales of old. The largest Archaeotheus recorded reaches 18 meters in length. While quite large and impressive for its size, it's nowhere near able to be mistaken for an island. So is it possible that the great squid we know of today would have been the culprit of capsizing ships? Well, given that ocean vessels were quite small at the time, some only measuring 60 feet in length, it's certainly possible that a giant squid weighing up to 3 tons and measuring around 100 feet could topple this ship. But despite the earliest physical form of evidence of the giant squid washing up on Danish beach in 1853, tales of the great kraken still continued. There were also at least three occasions, as recent as the 1930s, when the Kraken was reported to have attacked the ship. So can we be certain that the Kraken doesn't exist? A mere myth told by sailors too long at sea, mistaking large squid for treacherous beasts? Or tales to keep cowards away and only the brave at sea? Or perhaps it's something more. Perhaps the large squid we know of today isn't alone lurking in the depths of the deep ocean waters. The giant squid is believed to inhabit all the great oceans, and even with 150 years of research, there is still much debate among scientists as to whether there exists a single species of squid or as many as 20 additional species. So could the kraken still exist? Well, maybe it was once a creature of horror, and over time its species dwindled. After all, a beast of its size would require a great amount of food. And such amounts could be scarce to find, with its prey being so little in size and amount, and possibly adapting to new ways to hide and escape from their predators. Theory of the Kraken's existence could also be supported by what is known as deep sea gigantism, or abysmal gigantism, which is the tendency for deep sea animals, mostly invertebrates, to grow unusually large in size in comparison to its shallow relatives. So maybe, over several centuries, it has learned better to not reach the surface and stay down below. I mean, a staggering 95% of the ocean has yet to be explored by man, so no one really knows what lies deep below. We can also consider that something even greater and far more volatile might have caused the Kraken's demise. It's an aura of mystery surrounding this legend of which we may never learn the complete truth. At least not for now. So tell me your thoughts on the Kraken. Is it mere myth, simply a giant squid, or something more? Have you ever encountered any weird marine life you couldn't explain? I'd love to hear all your thoughts and experiences below. And if you like this content, please feel free to like and subscribe and comment below. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and stay safe everyone.